Hello, this is Trish Kelly, Data Manager for Federal Programs and Oversight at Tennessee Department of Education. Welcome to the Title I Data Mini Webinar. Our work at the department is grounded in the best for all strategic plan, which has three priorities, academics, student readiness, and educators. The agenda for this session begins with Title I K-12 determination. Next, we'll discuss Title I Pre-K determination. We'll also uh, discuss how to use the Title I K-12 and Title I Preschool lists to determine Title I status. We'll discuss two research queries, the Student Classifications Research Query and the Title I Targeted Assistance Research List. We'll uh, conclude with suggestions to improve data quality and contact information. Title I K-12 Determination. It's important to keep in mind that Title I K-12 and Title I Pre-K determinations differ. We're going to start with Title I K-12 status. In Title I school-wide schools, Students enrolled in grades K through 12 are Title I and are coded with a Title I T student classification. That is because they are all presumed to receive Title I funded services. By contrast, in Title I targeted assistance schools, students enrolled in grades K through 12 who receive Title I targeted assistance, instructional and support services are Title I. They are coded with the Title I T student classification and flagged once for each instructional and support service received, regardless of the frequency and duration of service. In non-Title I schools, no students enrolled in grades K-12 through are Title I and none are coded as Title I T. We'll just review a few scenarios, starting with School A. School A is a Title I school-wide school. 400 students are enrolled in grades K through 12. How many students are coded with the Title I T student classification? Scenario one answer. All 400 students enrolled in grades K through 12 are Title I and are coded with the Title I T student classification because School A offers a Title I school-wide program for students in grades K through 12. One exception we should discuss, and that is for special education walk-ins. Private school, home school, and preschool students receiving only special education services in Title I school-wide schools are not Title I, and are not coded with a Title I T student classification. For additional information about special education walk-ins, please contact Zachary.Stone at tn.gov. Title I K-12 Scenario 2. School B is a Title I targeted assistance school. 300 students are enrolled in grades K-12. 100 students receive Title I funded instructional or support services. How many students are coded with the Title I T student classification? What other coding requirement applies to these students? Scenario two answer. The 100 students who receive Title I funded instructional or support services are Title I and coded with the Title I T student classification because School B offers a Title I targeted assistance program for K-12 students. These 100 students are also flagged once for each instructional and support service that is funded by Title I. We will review coding these services in the targeted assistance research list query uh, later in this presentation. Title I K-12 Scenario 3. School C is not a Title I school. 500 students are enrolled in grades K-12. How many students are Title I and coded with the Title I T student classification? 
scenario three answer. No students in grades K through 12 are flagged with a Title I T student classification because School C is not a Title I school. Turning now to Title I pre-K determination. Most pre-K students are not Title I, even in Title I school-wide schools. This is an extremely important point that is not well known, so I'm going to repeat it. Most pre-K students are not Title I, even in Title I school-wide schools. Title I pre-K status depends on whether Title I funds support the class and student. In Title I funded school-wide preschool classes, all of the pre-K students enrolled in the class are Title I T because Title I funds support the class and all students in it. In Title I funded targeted assistance preschool classes, only the pre-K students supported by Title I targeted assistance funds are Title I T. In state, local, grant, and IDA funded preschool classes, no pre-K students are Title I T. Now we'll review a few Title I pre-K scenarios, starting with scenario one. School D, a Title I school-wide school, has 45 students enrolled in three preschool classes. Title I funds do not support any of the preschool classes. How many preschool students are Title I encoded with the Title I T student classification? Scenario one answer. No preschool students enrolled at School D are Title I and none are coded with the Title I T student classification because Title I funds do not support preschool classes at the school. And this is going to be the case for most Title I schools. There, there might be preschool classes, but they are only um, educating Title I students if Title I funds support the class. And that tends to be for just a minority of uh, preschool classes at Title I school-wide schools. Pre-K scenario two, school E, a Title I school-wide school, has one preschool class supported by Title I school-wide funds. All 20 preschool students enrolled in the class are supported by Title I school-wide funds. How many preschool students are Title I encoded with the Title I T student classification? All 20 students enrolled in the class are Title I encoded with the Title I T student classification because the preschool class is funded by Title I school-wide funds that support all of the students in the class. Now, if, if the school had, let's suppose, two other preschool classes, but Title I funds did not support those classes, then only the 20 students in the Title I um, supported class would be um, Title I T encoded accordingly. Title I Pre-K Scenario 3. School F, a Title I school-wide school, has one preschool class supported by Title I targeted assistance funds. 15 of the 25 students in the class are supported by Title I funds. How many preschool students are Title I encoded with a Title I T student classification? Scenario 3 answer. The 15 preschool students supported by Title I targeted assistance funds are Title I encoded with a Title I T student classification. The other 10 students are not supported by Title I and are not Title I students. Title I Pre-K Scenario 4, our final scenario. School G, a non-Title I school, has preschool classes supported by grant funds. 30 preschool students are enrolled in the classes. How many students are Title I encoded with the Title I T student classification? Scenario four answer, School G has no Title I pre-K students and no preschool students are coded as Title I T. PK students enrolled it in grant, state, local or IDA funded classes um, are not Title I students.
the Title I K-12 and Title I preschool lists are key resources for you. They will help you determine whether you have Title I K-12 schools in your district uh, and whether you have Title I funded preschool classes in your district. They are available in ePlan, uh, go to TDOE resources, federal programs data, Title I schools in Tennessee, and search by year. Uh, just as a reminder, a, legal, a login is not required for ePlan. Alternatively, you may check your district's consolidated funding application, the CFA. Districts identify Title I K-12 schools and Title I funded pre-K classes in their CFAs. Next, we'll discuss the two research queries that you, you will use to check Title I data, starting with the student classifications research query. First, you will log into EIX, excuse me, EIS, the state's database, select data reports, research queries, select the student classification research query from the query list, enter year as 2023 for the 23-24 school year, select student classifications and Title I T. To run the query, select view report. To download in CSV or Excel format, use the file icon to the right of Find Next. The research query results follow a standard format. The results will include a record for each student flagged as Title I T. School and student identifiers are on the left. The Title I T student classification is on the right. Those of you who have Title I targeted assistance schools in your district for K-12 students will also want to use the targeted assistance list research query. The process is similar from the EIS uh, homepage. You're going to select data reports, EIS reach, excuse me, research queries, targeted assistance list, uh, in this case, and is, is the one that you'll choose. Again, year is 2023 for the 23-24 school year. Select a school or all schools. You'll probably want to select a school because there are typically a small number of Title I targeted assistance schools um, each year in the state. Again, uh, to run the query, select view report. To download as CSV or Excel, uh, use the file icon to the right of find next. In this case, you see the results should appear as follows. There should be a Y for at least one instructional or support service for students identified as Title I and Title I targeted assistance schools for K, uh, that have programs for K-12 students. And N should appear for all other instructional and support services. And just as a reminder, uh, there are six codes for Title I targeted assistance instructional services, O1 math, O2 reading and language arts, O3 science, O4 social studies, O5 vocational, O6 other, again, N or for all uh, students not receiving those services. And similarly, there are six Title I targeted assistance support service codes, O1 health, O2 Dental, O3 Eye Care, O4 Guidance, O5 Advocacy, O6 Other, again, no uh, otherwise. Suggestions to improve data quality. I have three for you in this session. First, regularly collaborate with your colleagues in attendance, EIS, federal programs, and um, other teams that work with data to ensure that your data are coded properly. Next, frequently check your data in your student information system and EIS and upload revisions as needed. Finally, regularly refer to the FPO data manual for information about data definitions and reporting requirements. We will conclude with contact information. For questions about Title I data encoding, please contact me, Trish Kelly. For EIS errors and restaging problems, please contact the district technology support team. Our email addresses are shown here in the slide. 
that concludes our session. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do contact me if you have questions.